Hello there. In this video we're going to discuss a special type of functions for which a particular structure of integrals, namely definite integrals and improper integrals, can be applied. So we're going to first assume that f is a differentiable function on the right hand side of the real line, and we're going to assume that the limit as x approaches infinity of the function is a finite number, for example e to the minus x. Then the integral from 0 to infinity of f of ax minus f of bx all divided by x dx is equal to L minus f evaluated at 0 multiplied by the natural log of A divided by B where A and B are non-zero ideally positive real numbers. So we're going to prove this theorem uh, associated with these types of functions and integrals of this form, which are sometimes referred to as Frulani integrals. Alright, so let's start off with a proof of this Frulani integral representation. So I'm just going to start off by uh, mentioning just a couple things that we should know up to this point namely the fundamental theorem of calculus, namely the integral uh, from b to a of f prime of t dt is equal to f of a minus f of b, where f is the antiderivative of f prime, and f prime is the derivative of f. I'm writing it instead of the integral from a to b, I'm writing it as the integral from b to a um, for reasons which I'll mention uh, just a moment. So what I can do is I actually can replace t with another number, namely uh, xt. So I can have xt dt. And here I'm going to let x be a real number, but in our proof it's actually just going to be a positive number. So one can show that this is actually equal to 1 divided by x, and here it's important that we make sure that it's not 0, uh, times f of ax minus f of bx. And I'll leave it to you to verify that via u substitution that this is actually correct. Alright, so now we're going to look at our integral of interest and I'm going to name that integral star. All right. So star, which is equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 divided by x multiplied by f of ax minus f of bx dx is equal to what? So I'm going to begin by using this relationship here, and I'm going to multiply both sides of this equation by x, allowing that x and 1 over x to cancel, and then I can replace this with the identity that we have here. So therefore, this is just going to be equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of 1 over x multiplied by the integral from b to a of f prime, or x times, f prime of xt dt, and then dx at the end, right? So notice here that x is a constant with respect to the integral t, so I can factor that out, and the x and 1 over x will eliminate. So this is just equal to the integral from 0 to infinity of the integral from b to a of f prime of x of t dt dx. So I'm going to interchange um, these integrals, and we can learn later in multivariable calculus um, a more rigorous uh, condition on this function, this integrand, for which you can do this. So this is going to be equal to the integral from b to a of the integral from 0 to infinity of f prime of x of t dx dt. So now I'm going to integrate this function with respect to x. Therefore, in this case, t is a constant, right? Namely, some constant in between uh, b and a. So using our fundamental theorem of calculus, what's that going to be equal to? So that's just going to be equal to, by u substitution, 1 divided by t times f of x t evaluated as x goes to infinity and as x goes to 0, dt. Right? Now we're assuming here that t um, is some, let's assume it's a positive number. Right? 
So if it's a positive number, as x goes to infinity, xt is going to go to um, infinity as well, right? Now, by our assumption, we're assuming that f of x, as x goes to positive infinity, is a finite number. So we're assuming that this is true. That means as x goes to infinity, um, tx is also going to go to uh, infinity as well, right? Assuming that t is a positive number. So if this is the case, then this is going to be equal to the integral from b to a of 1 over t times L, so that's the limit as x goes to infinity of f of x t, and as x goes to zero, it doesn't matter whether t is positive, negative, or zero, um, t times zero is going to be zero, and then we're going to have f of zero, right, dt. Now keep in mind, L is a finite number, therefore this is a finite number, so I can factor that out, right, so this is going to be equal to L minus f of zero, times the integral from b to a of 1 over t dt. Now this is, of course, a logarithm. So this is going to be equal to l minus f of 0 times the natural log of a minus the natural log of b. Using our properties of logarithms, we have l minus f of 0 times the natural log of a over b, which is, of course, equivalent to f of 0 minus l times the natural log of b over a. And that gives us the result that we want. So now, let's work through a couple examples to sort of see how these Frulani integrals actually go out when you actually want to use this relationship. So example 1. Suppose we want to find the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus 5x minus e to the minus 7x all over x dx. And the Frulani integrals are really useful in case you don't know how to actually do the antiderivative of whatever function you're working with, right? All right, so we're going to take uh, f of x to be equal to e to the minus x. So if this is the case, uh, clearly we see that the limit as x approaches infinity of e to the minus x is going to be equal to 0, which is, of course, finite, and also f of 0 is going to be equal to e to the 0, which is 1, right? So both f of 0 and the limit exist, and we know that exponential functions are differentiable on the entire real line, moreover, 0 to infinity. Also, uh, now I'm going to be focusing on these pieces. So f of 5x is going to be equal to e to the minus 5x, and f of 7x is going to be equal to e to the minus 7x, right? So we're pretty much setting up our um, Frulani integral substitution. So that means the integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus 5x minus e to the minus 7x all over x is equivalent to the representation the integral from 0 to infinity of f of 5x minus f of 7x all divided by x dx. So we already know that this is going to be equal to l minus f of 0 times the natural log of b over a, or a over b. Depends on the direction you're coming from. Right? Where a is this number here, and b is this number here. So, substituting everything we have, the limit is going to be equal to 0, f of 0 is going to be 1, and we have the natural log of a over b, which is the natural log of 5 divided by 7. Now, 5 sevenths um, is a positive number um, that is between 0 and 1, so this is, of course, a negative number, but that negative number can reverse that. So this is actually equal to the natural log of 7 fifths. All right, so let's look at another example to demonstrate. So let's look at the integral from 0 to infinity of the sinc function of 3x minus the sinc function of 7x all divided by x dx. Um, in case you are not already familiar uh, with this function, so recall that the sinc function of x is equivalent to writing sine of x over x, right? So with, with the inclusion that uh, sinc of 0 is equal to 1, 
right? Which is the limit as x approaches 0 of sine x over x, right? So that's an appropriate definition, right? So clearly, um, f of 0, if we define this to be equal to sinc of 0, is equal to 1, and the limit as x approaches infinity of sinc of x is equal to 0, right? So it's the same uh, style as before. So since these two things are okay, and sinc x is differentiable in 0 to infinity, then this is an integral of Frulani type. So I'm going to call this star. So therefore, the integral from 0 to infinity of sinc 3x minus sinc 7x all divided by x dx. Why is my 7 so ugly? 7x right. x. x. Right. So this is, of course, equal to so what is my L? So my L is going to be equal to 0 minus my evaluation at 0 is going to be 1. And then it's going to be times the natural log of, so this is my A and this is my B. Right. So I have 3 sevenths, which of course is the same as the natural log of 7 thirds. Right. So this is just a few examples and also proof of Frulani integrals, which again is any one of the form 0 to infinity f of ax minus f of bx all divided by x dx, which is equal to l minus f of 0 times the natural log of a divided by b, provided that f has those properties that I mentioned. Hope you enjoyed.